Hi there, so I'm going to make an assumption. I have this feeling that you're watching this video to help you decide whether or not you should spend near $500 on a 3D printer. Which is exactly why the approach I intended to take with this video was everything wrong with the Saturn II. But the problem is, I really struggled. So hi, I'm Ross, this is Faux Hammer Videos, and I'm going to be a little bit more passionate this time than I normally am. Once again, I got a little bit excited and carried away. So I've printed miniatures, I've printed busts, and I've even printed large-scale dioramas. So hopefully, no matter what you're intending to print, you can use one of the things I used in this video as a relative subject. So when I say I struggle to find anything wrong with this printer, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the printer's perfect, far from it, but everything I could find wrong with it were just really down to minor inconveniences that I've had a better experience with with other printers. If like me, you're a miniatures printer, here's what you can print on just one build plate. This is more than a Games Workshop start collecting or army box, and this was one print session. So in this case, you've got a 10 inch screen and an 8K display. So that translates to pixels that are 28.5 microns in the X, Y axis. Relatively, I've previously talked about the Mars 3 Pro, which has a 35 micron pixel size. And the highest resolution printer that I've used so far is the Frozen Mini 8K, which has a 22 micron pixel size. Just like I said in my M3 Premium review, I can't actually tell the difference between prints on this and a 22 micron printer like the Sonic Mini 8K, but I can tell the difference between this and a 35 micron printer, despite this 28.5 micron printer being in the middle of the two. Personally, I just feel that's down to the limitations of resin as a material, rather than anything special about these printers. So, I want to get on to the negatives. Now, I'm not gonna waste your time talking about the unboxing. I took it out of a box, woohoo, great process. You'll figure out how that goes straight away. These aren't Apple products, they come in large cardboard boxes, but they are adequately packed so that at least most of them don't get damaged during transit. I think you need to blame couriers more than you can blame Elegoo for that. So here's a few things I noticed on setup, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, this is petty whinging, not an actual critique of anything to do with the printer. First, it doesn't come with a screen protector shrug. I mean, the last printer I had came with a screen protector and a spare, so I used that spare on this one. But arguably, it doesn't need a screen protector. That's just for people like me who would rather completely protect the screen. Because this has got a tempered glass overlay over the LCD, if you do get any resin spills that end up curing, all you need to do is fully cure them and scrape them off with a blade. Another argument is it comes with only one carbon filter. The last printer I got had two carbon filters, but the actual carbon block in this is absolutely huge. And the fact that a carbon filter even exists in this at all is a benefit. Does it get rid of all the smells? It's hard to say. I'm nose blind now because I've got so used to resin 3D printing, but I have noticed fewer complaints from my wife when this one's running. So consider that a win. What I really want to complain about, though, is the build plate. So in typical Elegoo style, this is connected to the actual arm on a ball axis, and there are two screws to tighten this and put it in place. In my experience, I have an absolute nightmare with these ball axis build plates, and I much rather prefer the one adopted by the other brands, which is the four-point screw harness, which actually you screw it in at four corners, and it gives you much more control over the build plate. Like I said though, I really wanted to complain about that, but I had no problems with this one. One thing I can complain about though, the USB port is on the side and at the back. So if like me, you're in a situation where you've got a load of 3D printers or you've got your printer, your wash and cure and several other things around the side, having it stuck out the side is really, really inconvenient because you've got to reach all the way to the back. You can't see it because of other things around in the area and you've got to plug it in three different times to get it in the right way. It's annoying. It's something that any cubic do. Don't do this Elegoo. It's horrible and irritating. Aha, I knew I'd find a complaint. Right, the VAT. It's too small. And I say that because this is a big printer and with a big printer, you're gonna to wanna to use a lot more resin. You can fit almost a bottle of resin in here, not quite a full bottle, uh, but that's very different to the 1.5 to 1.8 bottles that I can fit in my other 10 inch printer. But it's not just the height of the vat, it's also the width of the vat and the depth. This is quite narrow in comparison to the build plate. There's not much clearance between the edges of the plate and the edges of the vat. Now, 
Again, not a massive complaint, but what this means is just like the Mars 3, as it's printing and the build plate gets higher and further away from the vat, any liquid resin that comes off that build plate and drops back into the vat, well, it causes really nasty runs inside of my UV cover and I don't like it. It's messy. So yeah, fix that. The only real complaint I've got. Okay, two. One, the USB drive is rubbish. I have to say this. Stop sending these rubbish USB drives with these printers because they just break. This one hasn't yet, but I know it will because it's already started throwing off errors on my PC. But the other one, the big one that does my head in is just like the Mars 3. Whenever this printer's on, the fan's on. I don't get that. Like, what could possibly be running? What could be computing inside this 3D printer that requires it to have a fan running all the time? Leveling on this is absolutely super simple. As much as you need to do, take out the vat, loosen the two bolts that are on the ball axis, and then put a sheet of paper below the build plate. All you need to do then is press home and the printer should automatically sense when the Z-arm has got to its lowest position. If at this time the build plate isn't touching the top of your paper, you can manually adjust it, but you shouldn't need to. All you need to do at this point is tighten it up, tell it that this is your zero position, and then that's it. It's completely done. One of the things that totally passed me by was where it said put the leveling card between the build platform and the LCD, but looking in the box, I couldn't find this leveling card until it dawned on me. This is the leveling card. A really cool bonus I've not seen many people talk about yet is that the lid actually comes with a hole for a vent if you've got such a setup at your house. And this is really good because it means you can chuck all the nasty smells and horrible toxins outside. Also, another tip, and I keep mentioning these, get one of these suction cup handles and get it on the lids of your printer. It stops you getting resiny hands all over your printer lids. As I've mentioned before, I like to keep things clean. Here's all the stuff you get with it, which is a fairly standard affair. You get some filters, you get a scraper, you get a spatula, you get all the instruction manuals, a really rubbish USB drive, and as a benefit, you also get some extra screws. Whilst I'm gonna sound quite privileged here, one thing that Elegoo never send me is any resin. They've sent me some resin once, it was half a bottle of their cheapest resin, so I just decided to buy some of their new 8K resin because I wanted to try it out. But since that wasn't gonna arrive till the next day, I decided to use this as an excuse to try out my Soraya Tech clear resin. I managed to get a really cool and artistic time-lapse of something printing on this 3D printer. These look a lot better when you print something larger. Unfortunately, with miniatures, the build plate doesn't actually lift high enough out of the bed for you to actually see anything. So I'm really chuffed with the fact that I actually got something here. Results wise, I got a super clear 3D print and I actually cleaned it off in methylated spirits because, well, for me, methylated spirits is much, much better at cleaning things than isopropanol and it lasts so much longer. And it wouldn't be a faux hammer review if I didn't print one of these Wolverine busts from Draftnir Studios. Again, I'll throw up some comparison photos in a little while and I say photos because you can get a much clearer idea of how these look in a photograph than it wobbling all over the place because we are now at that point where we are arguing much, much less, like the tenth of a split hair in the differences between these printers. So this is two reviews in one. We're also looking at Elegoo's 8K Space Gray. I did really like the result. I find it really, really sharp. It shows all the details. It photographs really nice. And unlike my complaints about the frozen resin, this isn't brittle. It's got just enough flex in it. Don't get me wrong, if you drop something, it's still gonna smash and shatter. It's resin, it's printer resin at the end of the day but this has got more flexibility. And for me who prints miniatures, this could potentially become my next go-to resin. Speaking of printing miniatures, I want to do a big shout out and a thanks to Mezgeik. You know Mezgeik if you like miniatures. He's the guy who takes very traditional paint schemes and changes them and puts his own flavor on them and they look really cool. Well, he's sculpted his very own style of miniatures. They're called Dredge Marines. They're very much like Bioshock inspired space warriors. And they're actually very similar to some Death Guard Marines that I painted a few years ago with a similar underwater theme. So I was really excited to work with 
with him and get hands on some of these miniatures because the detail is superb. And even though they're multi-part and I'd much rather prefer just some feedback for you, single prints that I can just snap off and play with, the fitment on these, the parts that go together with this resin, everything snapped together so perfectly. And not only that, you've even got movable components, which is the first time I've seen this. I'm not saying it's the first time it's been done, but it's the first time I've printed something and you can actually snap the pieces together and still open the visor and move the weapon arm. Absolutely incredible miniatures, and I highly recommend if you're into your miniatures, definitely go and support him and pick up some of these. There's going to be more coming soon. They're on his Patreon. He's got some like orc warriors and various other things. Definitely go and check those out. Some more miniatures I printed are these one page rules models, and these are their battle sisters. I'm saying that in air quotes because it's quite clear what these are representing for anybody who plays Warhammer. And I've got to say, as much as I love one page rules, I am starting to get a little bit tired of how much they are leaning on the Warhammer because they are worth so much more than just trying to take a piece of the Warhammer pie. They actually have created some fantastic models of their own. I'm talking Saurian Stormhost, I'm talking Eternal Dynasty, and whilst yes, they certainly got Got their start for being the easy to play Warhammer alternative, it's about time they go out on their own and actually show what they're fully capable of with their own IP, their own lore and their own miniatures, because they can clearly deliver it and don't need to be doing things like this. These models are absolutely fantastic, I love them, I love the concept of battle sisters on bikes, that's amazing, and the sculpts have come out fantastically detailed, they really do showcase what 3D printing miniatures is capable of i'm just i'm i'm not happy about it and i hope you can understand why the next thing i printed was a diorama and i think you'll agree from the clear resin i used earlier it looks absolutely amazing as soon as i thought clear resin and i saw this model pop up this is from wicked studios and as soon as i saw this pop up i thought i've got an idea clear resin i want a clear predator behind the actual hunter and i think this brings it out and it's amazing unfortunately you don't get the lights with it you've got to pay for them extra but still i think this has come out really great just like I did in my last video, we're going to be comparing these Wolverine sculpts again. But this time I'm going to show you which is which. So the one on the left is from the Frozen Mini 8K, and the one on the right is from the Saturn 2. And again, I can hardly tell a difference. Obviously there's different resins used in each one, and depending on how you look at it in the light, one of them can, you know, pop the light a bit more. I think the Elegoo resin is a bit better for that, but if I was gonna say it, the Saturn 2 actually looks sharper, and I'm confident of my exposure settings on the Mini 8K. Now, the Mini 8K does have a little bit of crud in some of the recesses, but that's only because I left it sitting in the vat a bit too long, and some of the old uncured resin got stuck and trapped into those recesses. But yeah, if you look at these, I mean, there's not a measurable difference that makes the 28.5 microns of the Saturn 2 any worse than the 22 microns of the Frozen Mini 8K. These look absolutely incredible. As you noticed earlier, I printed this one clear as well, and it's come out amazingly. The one thing that's let it down is the fact that I didn't realize you, because it's see-through, you're able to see where it's supported inside the model, and where I've tried to get those supports off, it's scarred the inside. So, something I've got to play with. This wasn't really built to be hollowed out, but it is what it is. Also, I've done micro versions of this and the one printed with the Elegoo 8K resin, and you can see just how much detail is retained from the Saturn 2. This is absolutely incredible to see this level of surface texture at something that is no bigger than the size of my thumbnail. So I did some busts by Sid Naik, some of the most detailed sculpts I have ever seen. And it's amongst those that everybody's gonna have to print when they get a 3D printer, because these are absolutely incredible. Most of you will recognize Opie from the Sons of Anarchy, Ryan Hurst, who apparently has made some comments about how happy he is with this sculpt, 
directly to the sculptor. That's absolutely incredible. And if you're recognizing the other sculpt, it's good. No, I'm sorry to say people who commented on Facebook, it's not Joe Biden, it's not John Travolta, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes, the man is older now, so he's a little bit more wrinkly, but we still have this Terminator and he's represented fantastically here, not only by the sculptor, not only by the resin, but by this printer. And this is absolutely incredible. Honestly, do you need better than this? I also want to mention I wasn't using anti-aliasing and yet the print still came out this smooth. So like I said at the beginning of the video, you're probably here trying to wonder whether or not you should be spending $500 pounds on this printer. Chances are you probably already know you do, you just need a little bit more convincing. Sorry, I'm not trying to fully assume your intention, but again, like I said at the beginning, if it was me in this position, I'd want to know everything wrong before I went and spent the money. Now, there is one more issue with this printer that I will go on to, but like I said throughout the video, most of the actual issues with the printer itself are just minor annoyances. And I say annoyances, they are things that Elegoo could easily fix. And because they're there, it just makes the printer feel a little bit cheap but it is the cheapest of the 10 inch 28.5 micron printers, except the biggest problem with this printer is potentially Elegoo themselves. You might be thinking that this is Elegoo's latest and greatest 28.5 micron 10 inch printer, but it's not. There's actually a newer 10 inch 28.5 micron printer from Elegoo that they released later last year. I didn't even know about this until the beginning of 2023, and I cover these printers as part of my channel and my blog. So forgive me for once again being an idiot, but I was not aware of the Saturn 8K. Not the Saturn 2, which has an 8K screen at 28.5 microns, but the Saturn 8K, which is basically another printer by Elegoo released at the end of last year, and that has a 10 inch 28.5 micron screen. But what's the difference? Well, as far as I can see, it's got a smaller form factor, more similar to the original Saturn. But that could be convenient for some people where space and real estate in their home is actually at a premium. So how do we know which is better? Well, I'm going to tell you which is better and what the differences are in my next video, which I'll put a link to above once I've actually made and released it. So just make sure you don't miss out on that by clicking like, subscribe, the notification bell, and drop me a comment down below to say, did you watch this video and did you buy a Saturn II off the back of it? Just for a summary, once again, if you're printing miniatures, then you can print a massive build plate of miniatures, more than a Games Workshop army box worth of miniatures in one season sitting and they are incredibly detailed and some would argue more detailed than plastic models. If you're printing busts, again, massive build plate with incredible detail on it. Why would you not want this printer? And if you're printing larger things like, I don't know, helmets and armor and cosplay pieces, get an FDM printer and watch out for my Neptune Pro Max review, which will also be up soon. So don't forget to like, hit the notification bell and subscribe so you don't miss out on those videos. Right. I feel like I've been a bit too emotive this time, so I'm going to say bye. See you guys next time. I hope I haven't put you off. I just really care. Thanks for watching. Fohammer out.